For my sport analysis project, I created a DVD training tutorial on the tennis forehand. This DVD went over the proper technique of the tennis forehand and explained to athletes the correct way to hit a top spin and driven forehand shot. The purpose or goal of a tennis forehand is to return an opponent's shot with speed, force, spin, and accuracy in order to put oneself in the best position to win the point. This can be accomplished with a variety of different techniques. A player can use heavy or light topspin, a driven or flat shot, backspin slice, or a simple shot that goes over the net and lands within the playing area. In my DVD, I instructed the athletes on how to hit a standard topspin shot. The dominant mechanical principle of the tennis forehand is to project an object for maximum accuracy when the speed of the object enhances its effectiveness. In more simple terms, when a tennis player puts more speed and power behind an accurate shot, they greatly increase their likelihood of winning the point. As you will see in the following video, when hitting a tennis forehand, a player wants to be in the best possible position to hit a powerful and accurate shot to increase their chance of succeeding. There are many common errors among tennis players that affect their ability to hit the best possible shot. One of the primary errors in a new tennis player is improper grip. As you will see in a video shortly, many do not understand how to use the handshake grip. A handshake grip simply means facing the racket straight up and down, and as if you were giving somebody else a handshake, shake the racket and leave about one inch in between your palm and your fingertips. Even if an athlete does everything else right, having the wrong grip decreases the possibility of hitting a good shot. Other errors include using too much wrist, as if they were playing table tennis, not making contact at the right time, which would send shots in all different directions, hitting the ball too hard or too soft, poor footwork, and a failure to follow through correctly. Simply learning to follow through over the opposite shoulder can help a new tennis player pick up the game quickly and increase the effectiveness of their shot. Assessing, evaluating, and giving appropriate feedback will be crucial for myself or other coaches as we teach tennis players the appropriate tennis forehand technique. In this slide, you can see the basic characteristics of the athletes my DVD was created for. The intended audience in my DVD are casual participants of the game with a slightly above average overall athletic ability. They also know the purpose and objectives to the game of tennis. The athletes that my DVD was intended for will have strengths and weaknesses that will have to be prepared for in order to answer or coach in the event of a follow-up of the DVD. I am expecting my tennis players to have a certain level of physical fitness. I am hoping that they will be fairly agile, quick on their feet, and be flexible enough to swing and move the racket as needed in the game of tennis. As I mentioned earlier, they will also understand the purpose to tennis and the objectives and nuances that help a player win. Some weaknesses that I anticipate running into with my group of athletes is the inability to generate topspin, being inaccurate with their shots, improper forehand execution, and much more. I also expect to find problems with poor footwork execution, improper weight distribution, especially during the execution of the shot, and also the inability to move perpendicular to the court when preparing for the shot. In the event that I need to observe my athletes, I would use observation by phases of movement to help them adapt and learn the skill of the tennis forehand. I chose this observation method because a tennis forehand can easily be broken down into three basic steps or phases. The first phase, as you can see in the first picture, is the preparation of the tennis shot. In this phase, an athlete is prepared to move into position to hit a tennis forehand. The second picture depicts the next phase, which is the actual moving, swinging of the racket, and making contact with the ball in the tennis shot. Finally, the tennis forehand concludes with a follow-through of the racket over the opposite shoulder. These three phases, as you can see in this video, make it easy to observe whether or not an athlete understands each aspect of the skill. It also helps myself as a coach diagnose problems on a step-by-step -step basis. It is a simple and clear approach to help athletes learn the skill effectively and efficiently. Finally, I would like to be able to use a variety of feedback methods with my athletes. Most importantly, in my opinion, is verbal feedback or intervention. This allows a player to instantly know whether or not they perform the skill correctly or incorrectly, and it helps myself as a coach easily describe the good or bad things the athlete did. 
Another important feedback method is visual feedback. This is necessary as it portrays the proper way of executing the tennis forehand. Finally, I also very much appreciate kinesthetic feedback. It is useful as it instills muscle memory into the athletes and helps their bodies, as well as their minds, learn correct form. If I was forced to choose just one of these three intervention methods, I would choose verbal feedback so I could easily describe to the athletes how to perform the tennis forehand. This would allow for me to provide positive encouragement as well as describing to them the correct way to approach, swing, and follow through on a tennis forehand.